Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you in another video. All right, so the score was 120 107. The Lakers dropped the game in Sacramento. Um, man, I am, uh, you know, if you watched my videos earlier today, I really tried <laughs> as far as having the right mentality. And, you know, that was really what it was centered around is just forcing your will, overcoming what otherwise looks as a as if it's something that's too difficult to do. I wish our guys would have saw my videos. Maybe that would have helped some. But they didn't come in with the right attitude tonight, in my opinion, man. And we really, we really, we look bad as a team. We had some guys have some really good individual performances. But as a unit, we looked awful to me. We really did, man. It was a lot of, it was a lot of bad. Um, I'd like to start with the good, though. Um, Rui Hachimura had 20 points on 9 of 11 shooting. Damn near all of that came in the first half. I think he attempted, like, one shot in the second half, man. Um, Austin Reeves had seven threes tonight. The three balls definitely falling. I thought his defense on De'Aaron Fox was admirable, even though De'Aaron scored every time. I thought he was on him real tough, and, and De'Aaron was forced to take some tough shots. So I thought, you know... You're gonna say he was cooked, but you're also gonna say he didn't he didn't get blown past. We kept him out of our paint. Thirty eight points in the paint as opposed to the seventy two that they had last Wednesday. So that was a, that was incredibly uh important. But unfortunately we did lose the rebounding total uh by about I don't remember exactly how much, but we didn't win it. And um King shot the three ball extremely well, man. They hit a lot of threes out there, man. Um Keegan Murray hit five of them. Keon Ellis hit two of them. Uh, Harrison Barnes hit seven threes tonight. Um, Chris Darty hit two of them. And so that that was kind of what it was. They could beat you however you want to get beat, L.A. You know, if, if you want to get beat inside, they could tear you, your guts up. If, if you want to get beat outside, they could, they could shoot your head off. So that's kind of what we saw out there. It's just them showing us they could beat us in different ways, man. Um, I, I think the the thing about this particular game, before I kind of go in, is in a nutshell, you just got beat by a team that really played a lot better than you tonight. You know what I mean? If we didn't have so much else going on around this game, around our team, um, you just look at this game and say, Sacramento outplayed us, that's it, the end. Uh, I think there's a lot more going on, though. I heard of the D'Angelo Russell uh, statements that were that's going around today about how he uh, felt like the relationship between Dennis Schroeder and Coach Ham kind of got in the way of his communication with Coach Ham. I think that was hovering around the team a little bit. It was, a, I guess it's an article out. I haven't read the entire article. Now, for me, man, I'm going to tell you all the truth. This is why I'm just not necessarily a professional in this position. Because I read that quote and didn't think about it afterward. You know what I mean? As to where all the real like journalists are like, oh, my God, did you read what D'Lo said? And for me, I just I don't find that being on my radar for whatever reason it's like okay i see it and then i move on from it that's just how my brain works when it comes to certain stuff i'm kind of tunnel vision as it pertains to the mentality that i want to approach this basketball game but hindsight i would have brought some light to that quote because it really can affect a team that's my mentality is already fragile going into a game against a team they cannot necessarily beat um it was the wrong day for this quote to be released. It's the wrong day for us to be fragile as it pertains to our togetherness. We're coming off a fantastic Timberwolf game. And I think if this quote wasn't out there, I think this team has an entirely different mentality tonight. I think D'Lo approaches this game with a different confidence tonight. I just think that that quote went around and it set us back somewhat our chemistry. I really do believe that. I genuinely believe that. Um, and so D'Lo looked like a role player tonight. I think he walked out of there with like, 6.6 6 rebounds or something like 6 assists. It, it was not it was not the D'Lo that we've been used to seeing these last couple of days and his this is the only problem with D'Lo y'all and this is why I was kind of I'm, I'm, I'm just a little like unsure because at the end of the day D'Lo really can't do this. 
But he'll have games where he goes off of 44 points, looks like a world beater, and then he can come in off of a situation like this and just not not show up. When you really need him to be his best, he just he's nowhere to be found. And this is why you expect that he's going to do it again in the playoffs this year, man. Even after all the great regular season games that we've had since the last couple of weeks, his confidence and his focus and his 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 uh, aggressiveness, it can sway with the wind, man. And he gets himself in trouble, man. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to mean it. I was giving it some thought earlier. D'Lo, in listening to D'Lo throughout the years, the one thing that gets him in trouble is his mouth. He tends to be brutally honest in ways that often offend and hopefully after this particular time doing this, he will look to improve in that way in his life. There are ways to, to tell the truth, but you got to know that sometimes the truth is best left unsaid because it can do damage. OK, this is be honest. This is this is a beyond basketball conversation. It can really do damage when you're trying to get along with people, trying to do business with people, trying to put forth your image. It's not always okay. It's not cute to just say whatever you want to say, fam. Sometimes you're going to say certain things that's going to offend some people. Sometimes you're going to say certain things and it's going to make people look at you funny. It's going to make people not believe in you. It's going to make people not think they can trust you. And with what he's been through, without rehashing it, everybody knows what it was. He should not be the guy that's looking to be so brutally honest in regards to saying things that are going to throw other people under the bus saying things that are going to hurt people's feelings saying things that are just going to leave people feeling like damn that's awkward now you made the room tight because of what you said he's going to have to improve upon his character in that way okay let's just be honest because he said what he said i think it hurt the team tonight now he might have said this two weeks ago but of course it got to release today when he needed it not to the most and every time I listen to D'Lo Russell, he end up saying some brutally honest, kind of rude type stuff. Even when he don't mean to, he be saying stuff brutally honest that can be harsh upon the character or the harsh upon the, the, the way you look at somebody else as he speaks about them. He just going to have to get, he going to have to grow up in that way. Because, as, and, and I was thinking about this, and this is the truth. People are going to be angry at you, man. And if you can't fight, you shouldn't be doing that. I'm not saying he can or cannot. I'm not saying I'd want to fight him or anything like that. I'm just saying it comes, it comes to a point where if you're going to say certain stuff, you got to know people are going to come at you, bro. If you're going to say certain stuff that's going to leave other people looking at other people funny, you got to know there's going to be some people that are going to want to approach you about that. And you had better be ready to defend yourself, however that goes. And I think D'Lo... The way that he come off to me is the type of person where he wasn't raised to fear that. It's almost like he was raised to to toy with that type of energy when that type of energy can can do all kinds of bad stuff out here in the streets. You say a little caddy something like this to somebody the wrong person, you look up and you're being attacked physically. You just say the wrong thing and they shooting at you. Like he's the type of person to me in the media, just in the media, where he don't even mean to. But he end up saying some stuff to make somebody be like, yo, bro, I'm going to have a problem with what you said there. You know what I'm saying? And so that's that's something I've been noticing and, and, and been paying attention to. Every time D-Lo speak, once or twice he's going to say something that's going to offend somebody. And he's just being brutally honest. But not everything needs to be said, bro. Some stuff you don't say because you know it's going to hurt what it is that you're trying to accomplish. It's going to hurt somebody's reputation. It's going to put somebody down all this type of stuff like that and this is one of the times where i hope i hope he learned that lesson with this event but people like that when they're like that they usually don't bro and so that's what i gotta say about that quote man i just don't think he did himself no favors i don't think he did the team no favors i don't think this is the worst version of what he said but i think he really needs to genuinely look at himself in the mirror and say yo i don't want what i say to ruin what i'm trying to keep together i don't want what i say to ruin my reputation have people mad at me or whatever i don't want what i say to cause unnecessary 
threats in my life just because I want to be honest. Some honesty ain't really honesty. It's just being rude. You understand what I'm saying? And so that's that's been on my head all day long ever since that quote came out. And I and I realized what it was doing to the team as I was watching this game, as I realized what it was doing to him, what it looked what the coach had to deal with. I just I just it needs to be said, man. That's what comes to mind after watching this basketball game. Not the not the game itself, but just what could have made our chemistry fragile on a night where we absolutely needed it not to be. And it's Delo's honesty. Rude, harsh, and crass honesty, bro. Somebody need to say that to him. You know what I mean? Somebody need to be honest with him. Say, yo, not you and not now, as it pertains to certain things he says. And so that's that's what I have to say as it pertains to that. And with that being said, we got to shift our focus elsewhere. Anthony Davis, man, walked out of there with like 22 points, 10 rebounds. Demona Sabonis walked out of there with 19 points, 9 assists, God knows how many double-digit points. I felt bad. You know, going into the game, I'm like, all right, you got to force it. We got to win this game. We got to we gotta push the bonus around. You got to, you know what I mean? I'm thinking like, I have the mentality of somebody who's sick and tired of being pushed over by the same person. That's how I'm approaching it. And I'm expecting AD to come in with that same mentality. And to a point, I thought he did. In the first half, he was really pushing it. And some of the shots he was trying to attempt were just not falling. But near the end of the game... You just saw Demonis just pushing AD to the ground, bumping him in the face, knocking him down, just completely manhandling this man. And it just became clear to me that Anthony Davis just he 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 is not going to approach Demontis the way that I'm trying to coach us on these cam on this camera into the, the approaching that type of situation. You know, I'm approaching it with the idea that. If I come in with the right mentality, my willfulness is going to push over what it is that's coming at me. You understand what I'm saying? A mamba type of response to say, not today, not again, that type of thing, right? But if that's just not the makeup of the man, if that's not the makeup of the team, then all my rah, rah, ha, ha, it don't work. It's not, it's not going to have the desired effect. You're really going to get pushed over by the team that they can't overcome. You see what I'm saying? And so for me, I just had that unfortunate realization that this team just is not going. They're not like that, bro. They're not like that. No, the two videos that I made today, after watching that game, I walk away from it saying, my team's just not like that, man. When they have a mental block of a team that they don't believe they can beat, they really can't beat them. When there's schematic differences that keep us from being able to, you know, have have an edge on the basketball team, they're really going to be able to impose those those uh, those advantages against us, and we're going to lose. I can have the greatest rah rah attitude. I'm not folding attitude, Kobe, all that. I can have all that, but the men in uniform, if they don't have that, if the coaching staff doesn't have that, then you really do genuinely need to avoid certain teams in order to have the best opportunity to win because they're not going to, they're not they're not going to do it man. they're not they're not going to overcome what ultimately continues to beat them is going to continue to beat them and that's the realization i had about my team they're just not like that bro and you could you could bash somebody you know mentally and and, and berate them with all type of cuss words but then you just look at them and you just feel sorry like Nah, they just not they not built like that, man. No, they're really not. You know, in a night like this, the way that I would want myself to be represented, I ran through here causing chaos. If I couldn't get the victory, we'd probably fought about three times. You see what I'm saying? Like really. Because I not today, I'm just not let I'm not letting it happen. Yeah. I'm not a basketball mind. I tell you, I'll always refer to a Jason Timp or somebody like that before I have you talk to me about basketball. 
I come at it from a different perspective as a fan. I know the game. I know rhythm, but I don't know terminology. I don't know schematic stuff. I'm not professional in any way. But I can tell you that that, that three defense, our perimeter defense, uh, was atrocious tonight. And I thought we did ourselves no favor from a schematic standpoint. When you know a team uh, is capable of shooting the ball the way they did, they are someone that you need to take seriously from behind the arc. And I think that our – I think we were reacting to last week's game where we were trying to keep them out of our paint. And I think, like I said, they beat us the other way. And I always say Darvin Ham is when, – when Darvin's zigging, the other team is zagging. You know, literally, literally, it's it's this it's something that Mike Brown understands and Mike Malone understands. And two Mikes, they get it. Darwin's gonna react to the last thing you did, so just do the opposite of what you just did, and you're gonna win. And like this, like I'm I'm just being honest, man. Mike Brown ran circles around our coach once again, and um, you know, I think that 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 also played into why we weren't very good tonight. Our our, our defensive scheme. Uh, really didn't protect us from what it is that they were doing. It protected us from last week's scheme, but not not this week's scheme, offensively. So, yeah, I thought I thought we hurt ourselves there. But uh, LeBron James put up a valiant effort in the second half. The first half, he was nowhere to be found. Three out of ten in the first half. I think he ended the game with a lot of stats, though. I never quite remember what his stats are, and I think it's because it's in the middle of the stat sheet as a small forward. I think that's what the science is behind me, always forgetting what his stats are, honestly. Um, but but he, he really did have a nice statistical game for multiple categories. He had like nine assists, like 14 boards, double-digit points. He was really, really helpful tonight. Um, and I thought he tried to force it in the fourth quarter. It was a little too late, though. We needed all of that energy in the first half. But I wasn't angry at LeBron. I just thought that uh, I just thought that the energy wasn't where it needed to be in the first half. And... Um, I did feel like he was, he almost, to me, and I, I have no idea, but to me it almost felt like he was dealing with um, the frustration and the realization that we're not like that too. I think, I think that's, I think, I think he might have been thinking the same thing. I'm thinking like, damn, we really, we really can't beat the teams we cannot beat. As redundant as that sounds, we really don't have it in us to overcome things like this. And, um, I, th I think he was dealing with a little bit of that, man. But Rui Hatamore and, and Austin Reeves came out with the right energy. I think those two can be a part of the type of team that I think I can talk to the way I was talking to y'all in the first videos and second video I made today, with this with the mentality approach, and they will they will push for it. They got that in them, but there are other pieces on this team that don't have that in them, and that's that's unfortunate because it makes up the fullness of who we are. I thought Torian Prince should have shot more, man. I know this sounds crazy, but Torian was two for two. If you're two for two, you should have been four for four. You know what I mean? You got to attempt more shots when you're perfect. Um, Jackson Hayes, for the minutes he was given, it was fantastic, but he wasn't out there long enough. I thought that that was a problem. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie got 20 minutes out of him, and he did absolutely nothing. Just terrible. Spencer's shooting has been really bad for us. It, small sample size. He's only attempting like two and three shots, but he's missing all of them, and that's... That's hurtful for the team. His defense ain't good enough for him to be as inept offensively as he's been. I can get that same production out of Max Christie. You know what I mean? And it's a bigger body who's going to play even better defense. So I just think Coach, you know, Coach is trying to, to respect Spencer Dinwiddie for the cachet of player that he's been. But he's going to have to catch up to the player that he's become and start scaling back some of those minutes. And I know he just helped win the last game with the, with the big defensive play. I, I, hey, look. Far be it for me to tell you, I know this is a perfect science. Just when you give up on a guy, that's when they play great. But I'm just reacting to what I saw, man. And I just think we were a lot better if Spencer was – minutes would have been cut in half and those were given to uh, Max Christie. Maybe even Skylar Mays, man. Um, it's just what I saw, man. But, I, I mean, if, if I'm going to tell you all the truth, man, I'm just going to double back to what I said. AD just really – he just really – didn't have a whole lot of strength tonight, man. He tried to show us strength, but the Monster Bonus is just a significantly better conditioned athlete. When you look at those two, you could tell the Monus, he's ripped up and shredded, man. He's, you could tell he squats a lot, he stretches well, he eats well, 
he's strong as hell, man. Stevonis Sabonis is, is a, a amazingly conditioned athlete. And Anthony Davis is not. I mean, it's just that simple, bro. He's Even though he's shorter, you can tell Demonis is stronger than Anthony. He's just stronger than that man. And when he bump up against him, it's all curtains. It's curtains. AD collapses to the floor. He's not in that type of shape. And when I was looking at old footage of AD today that was posted by, I think, uh, Olympic basketball might have posted it, but they showed us footage of AD when he was in his younger days in the Olympics, his first couple of Olympic opportunities when he first got in. And he was in terrific shape. He's in the type of shape that he needs to be right now in order to go up against a guy like Demonis Sabonis. Um, and that's that. That's what I. That's what my eyesight was telling me. Like, yo, Demonis, just take better care of himself than Anthony does, man. He just does. And and that's where Anthony needs to continue to work on his off season because at the end of the day, Anthony's in the right head in the right direction for his own conditioning. But you know, when he first got here, he's working from a different place physically um he wasn't in shape when he first got here you know he had to reinvent his lower body and all of that and so he needs to continue doing that this is this is not a situation where you say anthony can't get in better shape you look at anthony you say you still got more work to do to get to where you need to be and as long as you're not in that type of shape you have guys who are push you around like this the Giannis's and Demontis's of the world they're gonna push you around bro and that's what I saw tonight, just a guy who wasn't in the type of shape that he needs to con continue to work to get into um, in order to dominate like like he wants to dominate against a guy like this. Because Demonis don't have that kind of problem. Demonis look like he's 2% but fat. Like, he, he's full shredded, man. Probably don't eat no meat, you know what I'm saying? Probably squats, a thousand squats a day. Like, he look like one of them dudes that just been in shape his whole life ain't never gonna get out of shape and as a result when he goes up against people who are who are out of shape uh it's not a problem for him so that's what i see down there just a fantastically conditioned athlete um imposing his will imposing his will man and then you got De'Aaron fox down there who's also in that category genetically different because he's faster than everybody um he's in better shape man that's what it is and I felt bad for Anthony Davis because I think he wanted it for the in the first half. He looked like he really wanted it. But in the end, it's just one body banging up against another one that's in better shape, bro. And that's that's really what it was. I want it to be more mental, but it ain't. It ain't mental. It's physical, bro. He pushed that man around. He really pushed that man around. He's able to do more against it. Rebounds twice as fast to the boards pushing him and all i mean it just was that it was that and so i felt bad for anthony davis because i know there's a monster in there you know what i mean anthony wants to be better but he gonna have to make the adjustments to his personal life whether it be what are, like all the stuff that demon is doing maybe you need to find out who demon is dealing with and bring that person to you as far as his nutrition his, his workout like work out with him in the off season. I don't think it's a bad idea, but that's the type of shape you want to get into. If you're Anthony Davis, that's that's your goal is to get in the type of shape Demonis is in over the next two years. And um, see, don't you get in better better uh, games against him? But as long as you not believe me, he gonna keep doing this to you. That's that's just what I see there. So, yeah, man, I mean, this ain't a body shame type video. I'm not far be it from me to say I got that, <laughs> you know, like I got it all. But that's just what I see, man. A guy who really needs to uh, up his conditioning to a, a much higher level in order to, to face this particular center. Um, Keon Ellis is fantastic. That's the next thing I want to tell y'all, man. This young fella they just put into their starting lineup about three games ago. Uh, he, he's he's fantastic defensively and on the offensive end. He hit a lot of shots tonight. I was incredibly impressed with his game. And if we could pry him away from the Sacramento Kings, I think that would be a very wise thing because we need what he brings to the table. And uh, he's pushing people for minutes, man. And with Kevin Herter missing the game, of whom wasn't on the injury report when I checked this morning, uh, it just gave him an opportunity to play. And he, he gave us hell all night long. He gave us absolute hell. 
So shout out to Keon Ellis. You're on my radar, young fella. Very, very impressed with what he did tonight. Um, and the rest is just the two doppelgangers, Keegan Murray and Harrison Barnes. Same height, same weight, same way. They shoot and they shot us down and they did it with a whole lot of uh, energy with their crowd behind them and cowbells and announcers and all of the whole ambiance. Sacramento definitely made us feel like we were on the road. I was not comfortable watching that game, you know what I mean? Listening to their announcers, they really, you know, you definitely know you're not you're not home, basically. Some, te- some places you go, you got a lot of fans, you feel home. Sacramento's not one of them. And they're lighting the beam, man. I think I think that's what it really comes down to. They light the beam. Salute to Kobe Minute. I just missed it, but they, they lit the beam, man. I love to hear what 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 the what Jason Timp and them have to say about this particular game. I'd love to know what what they think may have went wrong. I think it's they're probably going to say it was more about what Sacramento did right. To be completely honest with you, I think that's I think that's really what it's going to actually come down to. Sacramento did a lot of right things. They hit a lot of three point shots. They played good defense. They controlled the boards. And every time the Lakers went on any type of run, they stopped the bleeding with a good timeout. And then proceeded to hit a shot necessary. They hit all the back-breaking threes um, necessary to keep us at a distance. And caught, like I said, Mike Brown called timeouts, man. Did he see a 15-point lead go down to eight? He's calling a timeout. And out of that timeout, he's going to run a nice play. And and that play is going to ultimately hurt you. And we just had too many times down where we missed shots. AD will miss a little chippy. You know, Bron will miss a chippy. We'll make a pass and it'll you know, miss layup here. You know, there's a lot of that going on. You just can't do that against good executing basketball teams. And that's that's what we saw tonight, a very good executing Sacramento Kings team that could catch some people off guard, man, in these playoffs. I would not, after watching them against us, if they get the right matchup, they could get out of the first round, man. They're a good team. They really are. And they're clicking at the right time. And with the insertion of this Ellis dude and with, you know, Chris Doherty shooting better, um, they're, they're just significantly more deep than I think the West is really ready for them to be. They're a deep basketball team, well-conditioned athletes, man. So, And capable shooters getting better, young players who are getting better like Keegan Murray. So I, 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 don't, I don't think their ceiling is too high, but they look better than us in every matchup. I can tell you that. They look better than us. So tonight was no exception, man. I love what I saw from some of my guys, though. Like I said, Rui and Austin. They weren't. They didn't disappoint. I thought they showed up. I thought they had the heart of a lion. They they could have won this game if it was, um, if we would have spammed them a bit more. If we would have not deferred to to our stars and just continued to feed them as if they were stars all night long and let them read the way, they probably would have won the game. The way they were shooting, but we just you know, we always revert to okay, let's get AD the ball, let's get Bron the ball, and tonight I think was the one night, the one night where I just say, nah. You feed Rui, you feed Austin, because those are the guys who were hot. They're the ones leading you. They're the ones who came with the heart of the line. They're the ones who were going to overcome the Sacramento Kings team, no one else. And I just don't think we shifted that 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 focus because we're too busy, intentional on getting the Stars the ball, and the Stars didn't have it like that. That's what I think was wrong with this game in a lot of ways. The second half, we should have kept giving Rui, should have kept getting Austin the ball. Let them be the focal point because they were the focal point in the first half, and that's why we were even as close as we were. Uh, but, you know, we got to shift. Got to get it to the stars. Got to get there. Eh. And this is what happens. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, good teams are going to know how to shift. They're going to make adjustments. You know what I mean? If, if you're killing me from behind the arc, I'm going to adjust in that game, and you're not going to be able to kill me in the second half behind the arc. You got to find another way to win in that game. You know, if my two stars, three stars don't have it, Braun, AD, and, and, and Russ, but my two role-playing next-up guys in Rui and Austin have it, but then we're going we gonna, we gonna to ride their coattail. Everybody else is decoy. They the ones we going to all night until, until otherwise, until they prove they can't, but not us. You know, and, and so we have a, a certain mindset about how we're going to do certain things, and regardless of what's working, we're going to do what we intended to do. Regardless of what's coming at us, 
we're going to do what we intended to do. And that'll get you beat every time, man. That's the, you can't be dead set on a plan in basketball. You just got to react to what's coming at you. It's a reactionary rhythmic sport. And so as long as we have this minutes mentality, star mentality, you know, all this different stuff that, that's, that's predetermined without the ability to actually like read and react and then kind of mold into what you need to to win that game you're in, and then you're going to live and die with your little plan. <laughs> that's, that's the God's honest truth, man. Decent teams stick to the plan. Great teams will mold and adapt to what is coming at them and will adjust whatever they need to at the given moment to do so. And I just don't think we're that great of a team. Man. As a whole, we're just not. And that's that's one of the traits that, that, that cater to that. So... Um, I think I think I can say I'm disappointed, but I'm more so just coming to a realization that we're just an okay squad, y'all. And I was listening to one of the Laker announcers. They said the best way to look at this game is to just appreciate the good nights. When they have a game like Minnesota, a game like Milwaukee, just enjoy it. You know, don't have these high expectations for the team overachieving. Don't believe they're going to be great every night. Just enjoy the good nights. And when the season's over, you applaud because they entertain. But don't expect for them to go out there and, and change the world or be world beaters or win a championship or nothing like that. That's not the team you have, Lakers. You got a nice entertaining bunch who are going to show up for big games. They may occasionally win those games. Uh, they may not have the mentality to overachieve every night, but some nights they really will. And you're going to have some nights to cheer, man. And then you'll have some nights like this here. So that's that's what I see there. I think the game ball should definitely go to Demonis for just continuing on his uh, win, uh, lose lossless streak. How do you call that? Continue this winning streak against uh, Anthony Davis. He's ten and zero against AD. They've won nine straight against the Lakers. And um, you can fans. We can come in with the right mentality. We can believe, we can have the, you know, we can come in ready. But at the end of the day, it's not about what I, the fan, believe. And my willfulness and my desire, none of that. It's about the guys in uniform or are they like that? If they're not like that, then I have to humble myself, stand behind them, and just take on whatever it is they're going to be. And that's hard for me because I grew up where the team reflected my willfulness a lot of the time. Kobe leading the way, Shaq leading the way. Guys like Metal World Peace and Derek Fisher and Robert Ory, they reflected how I truly feel. And I just don't identify with this group that way. I like this group, but they, they don't follow how I follow these type of uh, at this type of adversity they just don't they're who they are and they'll define their path forward but I can't say they're a reflection of BDL 44 not necessarily so that's just that's just what it is man I'm kind of sad about that to be honest with you but they've given us some good games man and that's 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 what I can say man they've given us some good games so I expect they'll play good again. We got the Golden State Warriors on Saturday. Um, hopefully, we'll 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 do great things, man. Hopefully, we'll do great things, man. But um, they they just not like that, bro. BDL forty four. I thank y'all for watching. I'm out.